Thank you very much, Ian, for the introduction. It's great to be back uh, with you here again at this event. This is my third successive appearance at the event, because now you've been meeting for 12 years, and this is the biggest attendance so far, so clearly it's a sector going from strength to strength, and an agenda that's getting more and more focus uh, as the years go by, so it's really good to see so many folk here. And as I said, it's my third consecutive time here, albeit I was here by video um, a couple of years ago, but I was here in spirit with you at the time. And now we're going to get another video today from the Commissioner, which will be good and I'll refer to uh, shortly as well. And I've got my prop for my speech. I've decided that every time I come here, I'm going to collect a new prop. So last year, you remember, it was a small mini blue wheelie bin. And I was saying that their objective had to be that at some point in the future, your average household in Scotland could fit its waste, its residual waste, into that small little blue bin there that I had. And this is my prop for this year's speech, which I'm going to refer to uh, in a few minutes' time as well. So I'll just leave you all hanging on the thought of what that's all about uh, for the next few minutes. But there are a really good array of uh, speakers here. Uh, you've got the international experts like Walter Stahl, who I happened to meet in Parliament yesterday before he comes to speak to you uh, tomorrow. And also we're going to hear from innovative Scottish firms like Vegware, who I also recently visited to open their uh, premises in Edinburgh. And of course, there's other big name brands, there's councils, resource management firms, designers, manufacturers, uh, and the community sector represented at this event also. And, and as I indicated, uh, and as Ian said, you're going to have the video from the commissioner as well. And at this year's Royal Helen Show, where amongst other things we were celebrating Scotland's food and drink, uh, I also had the opportunity to meet the Commissioner there, the Environment Commissioner, uh, where we exchanged views on the zero waste approach. And I was able to update him on what's been happening here in Scotland and the Scottish Government's policy. Uh, and of course, he was very supportive of what we're doing here in Scotland. He thought Scotland very much, uh, in some ways, was a, was a beacon for the rest of uh, Europe to take notice of. And we did share many similar thoughts, particularly in terms of ensuring that resource efficiency is at the heart of our economies. And of course, it's really good to see that the title of this uh, year's conference here in Glasgow has changed because now it's about resource efficiency and the word waste has disappeared from the title uh, of this conference. So that's uh, also a signal of what's happening in this debate as well. But we do want to make resource efficiency at the heart of our economy here in Scotland. We have to make that happen, therefore we need action at every level, every, every level, from the global level right down to local levels. So obviously as Minister, for my part, I want to ensure that Scotland should be in the vanguard of that agenda. Uh, not just to talk about it, but actually try and put our words into action. We have to turn our ret rhetoric to reality uh, in this country. So why is putting the value of resources at the heart of the economy so important? Well, very simply, it's because we live in a very much a changing world, and this is placing new pressures on how we manage our resources. As you all know, the world economy is changing, with new major economies emerging in places like Brazil, India, Indonesia, and Korea, amongst others. Our climate is also changing. Globally, we're set to release another half a trillion tonnes of carbon emissions in the next few decades, and no part of our world will remain untouched by the impacts of climate change. And of course, we saw the report just last week in the news now saying there's 95% certainty that it's human activity causing all the emissions. Also, the global population is changing. It's due to increase to 10.5 billion people by 2075. And that population is at the same time also becoming more affluent and increasingly urban, so much so that developing countries will build the equivalent of a city the size of Glasgow every five days from now until 2050. So that's some thought, just to put that into text. Uh, I'll, I'll just repeat that. The developing countries will build the equivalent of a city the size of Glasgow every five days from now to 2050. So all of that together means that demands for our resources are changing. Globally, by 2030, we're expected to meet 41%, need 41% more water, 80% more steel, and 33% more energy. And for some more rare earth metals used in wind turbines, for, in for instance, demand is expected to grow by up to 2,600%. So some really startling statistics out there. And we all know that uh, in life, change is constant. We live in a world where the pace of change is sometimes overwhelming. 
In such a world, it is vital that individuals, organisations and countries speak to each other, collaborate with each other and, of course, learn from each other uh, as well. As part of the global community, here in Scotland, we might be quite a small nation in some ways, but we're an outward-facing nation with a proud history of innovation and collaboration with the rest of the world. In the fields of philosophy, economics, science and engineering, Scots have shown leadership by innovating and collaborating to address many of the world's issues. So today we must carry on that tradition of leadership, of innovation and of collaboration. Nowhere is this more important and more evident than our in our approach to the environment and resource issues. Scotland's targets on climate change and the waste are amongst the most stretching anywhere in Europe. We are leading by example. We've shown multi-million pound support for innovation and renewables as a government and also low carbon technologies. And in collaboration, Scotland recently became the world's first national government to join the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's group of 100 global leaders committed to accelerating a circular economy. So we believe our open, collaborative international approach to tackling resource issues will deliver real benefits for Scotland. It will bring new domestic industries in reprocessing and remanufacturing, new supply chain opportunities for resource managers, and could create up to perhaps 12,000 new low carbon jobs and up to one billion pounds additional economic activity. So that is a really big vision. And you may ask yourself why a country the size of Scotland is able to make that happen. Well, I believe our track record in this country has got us off to quite a good start. Our track record in waste and recycling an area where we've had full powers since devolution, and we have been able to show what we can do. Before devolution, of course, we recycled less than 5% of our household waste. Today, it's more than 40%. And that increase in recycling has saved more than 4 million tonnes of carbon emissions since 2001. And we're seeing a similar transformation with food waste. One million households in Scotland now have access to a food recycling service. Just five years ago, eh, there were none. So in five years, we've gone from no houses having that service to one million today. Our waste regulations, which come into force in just three months' time, will also drive a step change in how businesses recycle. That will be a game changer and will show how we've used devolved powers to maximum effect, taking decisive action to guarantee high quality recycling, albeit there's still a long way to go in that regard. So we're asking those of you in the resources industry to get behind that vision for high quality recycling and help us go even further by signing up to Scotland's resource sector commitments. I see some of the early adopters like Changeworks and William Tracy Limited are on the panel this morning and I applaud them and others to support this initiative through Zero Waste Scotland. We're also doing our best to help people recycle when they're out and about in Scotland. We've invested nearly 3,000 recycling points in public places including many of our, our busiest train stations, for instance. And I think they, these really are fantastic examples and schemes, and we have to uh, see them well used in our communities. So that's something that's got off to a really good start, but again, we want to spread out uh, as the years go by. Because we do still have a long way to go if we want to achieve our, our recycling target of 70% by 2025. So as we look for new ways to achieve that ambitious target, not only do we have to use our own skills and ingenuity in this country, but we also have to look at international best practice as well. And I was very lucky to visit Sweden just a few weeks ago to see how recycling uh, reward schemes work there, uh, like those that Zero Waste Scotland are trialling trial back here in Scotland at the moment. But it was good to see over in Sweden and how they can work on a national level to meet, uh, and also I had the chance to meet the ministers responsible for these schemes in Sweden. So I was impressed with what I saw over there and how easy that system was to use. Uh, and I was also most impressed to see how their recycling schemes uh, were actually delivering real success. We saw, for instance, with a deposit return scheme, an almost total absence of bottles and cans by the roadside, something we don't see in Scotland, they're outside Glasgow and our local roads. And of course, I saw a major impact in litter overall. I saw an 85% recycling rate for these uh, valuable materials that were being collected. And of course, I saw that such good quality of material for recycling it attracted a plastics reprocessor to set up a factory next door to the National Collection Centre. So it was really good to see that at first hand. We've got our trials underway in Scotland, but actually to go to Sweden and see what another country has achieved it was very inspirational. So of course I have now asked Zero Waste Scotland to look at the feasibility of a national deposit return scheme for Scotland. There are of course many people out there who perhaps think that's not just the simple answer that we think it is. But my challenge to all of them is to demonstrate how the same outcomes can be achieved with a different approach. 
I'm all ears. But I want to see these three things for Scotland, an end to litter, much higher levels of recycling, and our own domestic reprocessing businesses based here on their own doorstep in Scotland with all the subsequent economic and job benefits. And I will consider any options to make these things happen. But what I am absolutely clear about is I'm very keen to put in place radical steps as soon as possible to make that happen. We have to make sure we move on to action and away from the rhetoric and away from warm words. But of course, recycling is just uh, part of the story. The challenges we face globally about resource security and changing demand mean we must show leadership on preventing waste in the first place. We ultimately need to design waste out of the way we live. So we are now embarking on our next steps towards being a zero waste nation. And today we are publishing our Safeguarding Scotland's Resources programme. Its focus is on stewardship of our natural assets and making our economy resilient for the longer term. So we are setting overall targets to cut waste by 7% by 2017 and by 15% by 2025. And it's not just the weight, the weight of the waste that's important, it's also the environmental impact. We have also updated our groundbreaking carbon metric to measure progress in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. And it shows that the total carbon impact of Scotland's waste was 14 million tonnes in 2011. The actions we are bringing forward will reduce that by 22% by 2025. And our rationale starts from the position that business as usual is simply no longer an option. We need to act now to safeguard our economy from the resource pressures that I have been talking about in this talk. But importantly, there are also major opportunities to reduce costs and grow low carbon businesses by, by using our resources much more efficiently. To drive this forward, we have created Resource Efficient Scotland, bringing together support in energy, water and materials in a very unique approach to help businesses in the public sector. And since it started in April, Resource Efficient Scotland has already been engaged with 8,500 businesses across Scotland and already potential savings of, of over half a million pounds um, have been identified as businesses begin to implement some of the changes that we're recommending to put in place. It's also identified, for instance, potential uh, investments of uh, £1.5 million in energy and water savings for the NHS in Glasgow. Steps again which could be repeated not just in NHS Glasgow but right across the whole of the NHS estate uh, in Scotland. So if £1.5 million can be saved here in Glasgow, just think how much could be saved right across the whole uh, of Scotland. And there's lots more exciting innovations happening out there. For instance, just a couple of weeks ago I attended the opening of the Resource Efficient House, built by Resource Efficient Scotland. An absolutely stunning example of how homes can be designed to enable efficient use of energy, water and materials across their whole life cycle. And I urge you all to go and see the resource efficient house on the old Ravenscraig site, which uh, really is impressive to actually see and walk through and it's very, very inspirational. And if any of you work in the construction sector or the architectural sector or the housing sector, it's an absolute must that you go and see that house. So please go and see it if you work in any of those sectors and you've not been there yet. It's your duty to go there and see it. It's absolutely vital and it's very, very inspirational. So for me, that project and other projects encourage us to think much more broadly about the resources we do use as a society and within our economy. And similar measures right across our economy could save as much as £2.9 billion a year as estimated. And I guess, uh, given the current financial climate, which is getting better, but these figures are big figures. And if we can save £2.9 billion for our businesses, we should be grasping onto these opportunities. So the new plan sets out how coordinated actions can encourage sustainable design, influence individuals, and make sure we have the right skills to deliver change in Scotland. And it commits to a new resource efficiency pledge initiative to build momentum and help Scottish companies take the credit for their actions. So that's all about encouraging businesses to make the pledge to be committed to be being more resource efficient and to get recognition for that. The new plan also sets out our thinking about the circular economy and what we need to do to make it happen here in Scotland. We believe the circular economy is a blueprint for achieving our aim of responsible economic growth and sustainable economic growth. It enables growth whilst at the same time having a potential positive environmental impact. It is the right approach for us all to aspire to. But to get there, the change needed is long-term and far-reaching. 
is about fundamentally rewiring many of our systems here in this country. In the short term, we need to build a case for change to persuade people to get on board, businesses and individuals and communities and households. And we are embarking on two work streams, one to gather evidence to inform that change and another to engage with senior business leaders and influencers to inspire and motivate them. We also want to showcase early adopter businesses here in Scotland. Companies like Dryden Aqua and Hewlett Packard are doing great work and rethinking conventional approaches. Again, I encourage you to hear their talks, which understanding are happening later today. We also continue to invest in businesses and projects that help us realise our zero waste vision. And I want to update you about one such uh, new exciting project happening here in Scotland. And it involves this. Today I can announce that we did provide £168,000 to a plastics recycling business called Panel to Panel, which is turning waste plastic from fridges and yoghurt pots into construction fittings from schools, for schools and hospitals. And our factory in Dalbiti, and the guys that are running it are sitting right there in front of me, uh, will create 25 jobs initially and hopefully more jobs in due course. Uh, and the company really does expect to grow in the future. So they are turning yoghurt pots, yoghurt pots into construction material, this energy efficient, low carbon footprint, and it could be used for, as I said, construction in hospitals or other buildings. And that's a sign of innovation, it's a sign of progress, and it's a sign of the future. And I'm told that the carbon footprint is 75% less than the alternative. So this is the future for construction in Scotland. And we have to get the message not just to the experts and those that are very interested in the subject in this room, that this used to be yoghurt pots, but out to the general public as well. So when they're recycling their yoghurt pots, they can actually see the benefit of what can happen and all the benefits that will flow from using this new 21st century sustainable materials, which will also help us achieve the climate change targets that everyone keeps reading about in their newspapers as well. And so people can join up all the dots and hopefully have a greater understanding of the bigger picture out there and ultimately what it means is more jobs for Dalbiti and of course across the whole of the Scottish economy as well. So it's a really good news story and it is a really good example of what we can create in terms of new economic opportunities uh, for Scotland. But of course the big challenge is whether we can change fast enough. I mentioned our great progress in recycling. We've also seen companies taking action to reduce packaging and develop more sustainable products. But this is just a drop in the ocean compared to what we really need still to do. We need to move these issues from the margins to the mainstream, from the back door of a business to its boardroom, and we need to make the switch from having businesses doing good things in isolation to building genuine collaboration for change right across all the relevant sectors. To support that, we're making this mainstream within government and through a joined up approach, we're covering our enterprise and environment departments and agencies and Zero Waste Scotland. We also need circular economy thinking to be hardwired into the next generation so they grow up expecting waste to be designed away in the first place. That's why we are, as I said before, working with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation to excite and equip a generation of innovators who can help us design waste out of Scotland's economy. So, our zero waste approach is a clear example of how this government has taken devolved powers and used them to shape a unique and progressive 21st century agenda providing long-term certainty for investors and hopefully showing all your sectors that Scotland is the place to be. Hopefully, next year, there's a big vote happening in Scotland, we'll get even more powers to the Scottish Parliament to drive this agenda forward even more quickly so we can use our influence on the international stage to show we are setting an international example and to influence what the rest of Europe and what the rest of the world is doing as well. And, of course, we can even fix environmental principles into a written constitution for Scotland. So hopefully there's lots of new opportunities around the corner of how we can accelerate this agenda which relates to the powers that your parliament has uh, here in Scotland. But whatever Scotland decides in the referendum next year, we do have a lot to be positive about at the moment here in Scotland. And the zero waste agenda is moving thinking about resources from the margins to the mainstream and moving the circular economy from rhetoric to reality. The actions we are already taking are helpfully uh, making businesses save money and creating jobs and promoting economic growth at the same time. Our priorities for the future are supporting innovation and new ways of doing business as we move towards a circular economy. 
We know that Scotland's embarked on a very ambitious path, but we do think it's the right path and we should stick at it and we should work together to try and move along that path together and grasp all the benefits along the way for Scotland's businesses, for Scotland's communities, for Scotland's environment and for the world's climate at the same time. It really can be a win-win for everyone involved. So let's transform Scotland into a circular economy. Let's grasp all these benefits. Let's make this debate, this debate centre stage in Scotland. Thank you very much.